So in today's video, what we're going to be talking about is Decade Greenside Modifiers. One of you guys commented in the comment section asking for me to talk about them. So that's what we're going to do. Let's get into the video. And I know one of the things I didn't really get into in my last video was mainly talking about driving and how to you know, hit your driver and how to hit your long clubs differently off the tee and how to kind of change your mindset to that, say, send it strategy. One thing I didn't really touch on was what you should consider when you're approaching the greens. Now, one of the things that Scott Fawcett and Lou Stagner don't want people to do is they don't want people to chase angles. Angles, schmangles is one of his little favourite phrases that he uses. And I think that in the past, I've probably been a little bit guilty of that because I thought, well, you know, if the green's quite narrow front to back, then sometimes I'd lay back a little bit further to give myself, say, a better angle. But actually what you're doing is you're making yourself go into the hole with a longer club, which gives you a lower descent angle, which makes it harder to control on the green. So what are greenside modifiers? Well, greenside modifiers are things that are going to change your score or change your expected outcome. Here you can see the average data from the trees and from bunkers from different distances. This just gives you an idea of how to manage your expectations on these holes. So one of the things that Lou Stagner always goes on about on Twitter, if you follow him, he always goes on about managing expectation. Now, we amateurs tend to think that we should be doing better things than we already are. So we should think we should hold all 10 and 15 footers. We get annoyed, we might do a club wrap, might put the club over your knee, might throw the club at the bag, hit the ball on the volley, which some, consequently sometimes the best strike you might have had that round. What you'll notice about bunkers is, when you're quite close to the hole, you're not losing or gaining that much really. But when you're really far back and you're in a fairway bunker, say 200 yards, if you get on the green, you're gaining almost two shots on average, which is crazy. Absolute crazy. And bear in mind, this isn't against club professionals. This isn't against your local amateur. This is against tour professionals, so tour averages. So when you're thinking you're gonna hit the green from 200 yards over the water, probably isn't the right strategy. You know, refer back to this chart. That's what I'll certainly what I'm gonna do this year and make sure that I'm making the right decisions and choosing some good decade targets. So your decade modifiers are taking into consideration other things as well, like wind and elevation and how wide the hole is. What you need to consider is that there's, you know, this is based in math. So the further you are away from the hole, you add on one yard of dispersion. Now this obviously isn't perfect because everyone has different dispersion patterns, but as you can see from this chart, the further you are away, the more it builds into the math of, say, your shotgun pattern. So you're going to expect to miss the hole by more or your target by more from 250 yards than you are, say, from 100 yards. Now, for people that are interested in this in terms of their course management, I wouldn't get too hung up on, say, the numbers and getting it all right without using the Decade app. If you aren't using the Decade app, I wouldn't worry about the modifiers. Um, that's something that you need to obviously buy into at a later date. What I've done to make sure I can improve my game, so I have considered elevation. Um, I've been using uh, 18 Birdies app to be able to track uh, the, diff the impact that it makes in terms of like your yardages. Now away from decade, I think it's really important that you just know for your own game how much a wind affects your golf ball or how much an elevation affects you because there are basically laws of averages that you can go with. But actually, ball, if your ball flight's high, you're going to be affected by the wind more. If you hit it low, obviously less. The same goes for when you're going up and down slopes. It might be that you take a club, you know that taking a club more, or two clubs more, up a tip, uh, say, 20 yard slope. Now what I would do, away from the course, which is what I have been working on, is knowing how it affects your game. If you take a club into a 10 mile per hour wind into, how much does it affect your overall distance with a five iron, a seven iron, a wedge? And you also need to do that downwind as well and crosswind, because these are the things that are gonna make a massive impact on how you manage your golf ball around the course. Because this is what decade is, it's just management of the golf ball. And if you know all of these things and how your ball is affected by these variables, these modifiers, then you're gonna score much, much better. What's important to consider as well is if you do get round to using the modifiers, they aren't from the middle of the green, they are from the edge of the green. So this is to give you an idea of, 
you know, where your dispersion patterns will go. So I'll throw a couple of images on the screen that uh, have been created by uh, the Decade people and so you can kind of wrap your head around it. So I've just put some data on the screen now that you can pause at your leisure. But the first set of data is from the fairway. Then the next set of data is from the rough and the next set of data is from the bunker. All this is to talk about shots gained and shots lost from different positions and from different distances. And what's worth saying before we get completely rained out today and I can't do any more video is that you can't use green side modifiers properly unless you're doing decade elite. So you've got to pay up for the whole program, not the foundations. Um, and that's quite a lot of money up front, obviously, but totally worth doing if you have got the money. But if you just want to have a better awareness of how to manage your ball around the golf course, I'd certainly uh, drop into Decade Foundations. I think it's absolutely an amazing resource to use. And if you haven't already, sub to the channel, make sure you drop a like and a comment on anything you want looking at in the future. Cheers, guys.